Hi, my name is Jane. I'm also known as Jane 108. I've been teaching sacred geometry and Vedic mathematics for the last 35 years. So I've been traveling around the world. I'm mainly focused in Australia and I'm working with my family for the 108 Academy, teaching children sacred geometry. I have a vast experience of mathematical codes. I love turning numbers into pictures. That's the thesis that I'm working with in a nutshell, how to make mathematics beautiful. So as a, over the decades, I've come across certain mathematical patterns. I'm a pattern hunter. And one of my main interests, as most people know about me, is the golden ratio. So apparently there's another amazing ratio that a lot of people haven't even studied at school. It's called E. If you look at the title page here, E is a short letter for the exponential function. And I'm going to explain what that is. So this is a unique 108 discovery that I did in the year 2000. And there's a new formula for E. So the, the, the traditional value for E is 2.71828.1828. Do you notice how the 1828 repeats again? So I'm, I'm going to come up with another way how to generate this E. So we, first of all, we're going to discover, well, what's E used for? Like it's used in compound interest. It's used in um, half-life. If you're a physicist and we want to look at the nuclear decay of an atom, it's called the half-life. We need to understand E. It's used in the population growth and decay of bacteria and even in human populations. So this E function is as, is as special as the golden ratio, but unfortunately we don't hear much about it at school. So I'm going to show you the traditional value of how E was, the traditional formula for E is over here. If you look at this value here, E, in 200 years ago by a man called Leonard, not Euler, but it's actually pronounced Euler, we have to understand the thing he see where it says three factorial that three exclamation mark means three multiplied one times two times three so factorial means you multiply all the numbers so three factorial is one times two times three is six but because it's one slash six that means one divided by six so the traditional value is one plus one plus a half plus one six plus one on four factorial would be one on twenty four then one on five factorial would be one over 120. So you keep adding these minuscule fractions and eventually they reach a limit. So this was discovered 200 years ago that this phenomena called E, the exponential function, approached a value called 2.71828. And that's quite a, a very interesting um, value, 2.71828. 1828. If you look at the next decimals there, it goes 45, 90, 45. And that's interesting because 45, 90 and 45 are the angles of an isosceles, uh, a triangle, an isosceles triangle, a square one by one where the, the, um, the, di the diameter or the hypotenuse is root two. So there's a lot of patterns just in this traditional value of E. So I'm going to go back to my cover. So I'm going to explain the general formula. I've shown you how Leonard Euler arrived at the value of 2.71828 by using reciprocals and factorials. But I've come up with a far more genius, simple and elegant way of doing it. So I choose three numbers. Let's just take nine. So I want to take three consecutive numbers. So consecutive means in natural counting order, like seven, eight, nine. So I select nine, I'm gonna call n is nine, and then I'm gonna multiply whatever the number is nine, I, I multiply nine, nine times. That's called nine to the ninth power. So if you zoom in here, you've got nine times 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 nine. That's called nine to the ninth power. I divide it by the previous number called eight, to the eighth power. So there's eight multiplied eight times. So here you've got nine to the ninth power divided by eight to the eighth power. And then from that calculation, we subtract eight to the eighth power divided by seven to the seventh power. So that's what that general formula is saying. If, if the n to the nth power is nine to the ninth power divided by eight to the eighth power, Subtract from that calculation 8 to the 8th power divided by 7 
to the seventh power. It's quite simple and amazing. And how I calculated this, it's, it's like an epiphany. It's, I could be working, I could be building, I could be dancing or doing something. And then this revelation just came to me. So it's a mystery how when you channel these mathematical codes, how it can just come at any time. But it's so simple. So I've explained um, where, how, how is um, E used, like it's used in carbon dating. And also, if you watch a lot of these criminal movies, sometimes we need to know the exact time of death when the murder has happened. You'll see on these movies, they need to know the exact time when someone died to help solve the case. So E is used of that in calculating the decay of human cells. So it's used in many things. Um, okay, so I've calculated, using my formula, 9 divided, 9 to the 9th power divided by 8 to the 8th power, that's for n equals 9. So I had an amazing calculator that could take n to, to the number 2802 and then my calculator stopped. So I've calculated E to, to be 2.7182818 to 7 decimal place. And what I'm calling for, I would, I'm calling for a computer skilled mathematician who can plug N to a higher value than 2,800, maybe up to like 10,000, even a million, because we want to check that um, E is calculated infinitely. It's called an irrational number because it never repeats. It's like the golden ratio. The value for E is 2.718281828. 4590452353. It goes forever without a visible pattern. So we call it irrational because it's irrational because it can't be calculated algebraically from two numbers or two integers. It's an oddity, like the golden ratio. Okay, so um can we zoom in on this? So this is my discovery. I've written it out nine to the nine multiplied nine times divided by eight multiplied which is multiplied eight times, and you subtract from that eight multiplied eight times divided by seven multiplied seven times. But when you do it like this, if n is nine, we only get a value for 2.7. You see, so it's not accurate yet. We have to go way beyond n equals nine to, to get to, when I put n equals 2,800, a big value, we get, we get it correct to seven decimals. Okay, so the next page is I'd like to talk a little bit about the brief history. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about the brief history of E. So in the, the first reference to the exponential function was in the year 1618. And do you know, do you know anything special about the number 1618? It's actually got, if you see it as a decimal, 1.618, it's the golden ratio. So this all started in 1618 when Napier did some work on logarithms. So when we say a logarithm, like 100 is what? It's 10 squared. So 10 to the power of 2 means the logarithm of 100 is 2 because that's the index that it's raised to. This is a law of indices and what we call exponents, right? So logarithm is a scary word. It just means that the logarithm of 100 is 10 to the power of 2 makes 100. So so this, so this Napier did this work with... Um, logarithms which led to cal comp calculators and computers. So it all started in 1618. And then in 1647, we had St. Vincent did work on a rectangular hyperbola. So this is what, so two, we're talking about three, 400 years ago, mathematicians were plotting curves. This is the curve for one over, y equals one over x. So we know this beautiful sort of curve. And if we measure the area from one, to get an area, square area of one, we have to go to e. So one, up to 2.718 is the, the square area having unity or oneness. So that's why these were important. So I'll go back to my history. So in 1661, Huygens took E to 17 decimal places. He did the work on the hyperbola. In 1683, Bernoulli studied compound interest and we got a formula for compound interest, which is very similar to the E formula. In 1684, James Gregory worked with um, limits and exponents. And then in 1690, um, Leibniz wrote a letter and he used that E. So the reason why we use E 
for exponential is because someone wrote about it in 1690, that it was a fascinating number. 1731 is the real date when Euler um, used this in a letter to Goldbach, and that's why we're using it today. There's the general formula that they knew two, three hundred years ago. And in and as the, as the history goes on and on, you can see that mathematicians today have taken E to 900,000 decimal places and even more. So that's just a brief history on the value of E. Um, yeah, so you can see that in the world history of mathematics, there's a quite a fascinating development. This is not just any number. This is the number of populations and growth and decay and cells and populations. It's a very fascinating number and I love it because it's very similar to the golden ratio, which is the mathematics of biology and curves and living systems. So there are formulas where E and phi are linked together in the right angle triangle. So there's a lot more information to come. I just wanted to let you know that I, I discovered this amazing formula um, 19 years ago in the year 2000. Um, but, and so I had a, about 10 years ago, I had an amazing calculator on a PC. This is a Mac, but I had a calculator that went to 80 decimal places. It's called CCalc. It was a free download from the internet. So I could take all my um, calculations up to 80 decimal points. So this is where I plug n equals three. So if you're gonna do n equals three into my formula, you go three times three times three divided by two times two minus two times two divided by one times one. The answer was 2.75. And you can see that that's getting close to E. So for n equals four, it goes to 2.73. For n equals 18, the answer is 2.718, so we're getting closer. So this PowerPoint that I'm doing is a call for mathematicians to take this very simple discovery and plug it for n equals 10,000, n equals 1 million. Um, you can see that, um, as I said before, the 1828 repeats. Isn't that interesting? You got So it's 2.7, then it goes 1828, and that repeats, 1828. And then the next six digits are interesting because you've got 45, 90, 45. They're the angles of the unit square when you cut it in half and you want to study the tan or sine of a 45 degree angle. So you need to know the 45, 90, 45. And you can see here I've highlighted, oh, there's three nines there, there's four eights. And because of computers, someone, I'm not sure who did it, but someone took... the the, not the first 1,000 digits, but they took it up to 500,000 digits. And they discovered that there's one place in the sequence where nine lots and nines are in order. Just like I've highlighted the four eights, well, there are nine nines in a row in the up to the first 500,000 digits of E. So you can see that mathematicians are fascinated by this. And Euler had a famous equation called E, that's 2.71828 to the power of i multiplied by pi equals mi minus 1. Now, that's probably one of the most famous mathematical formulae in the world, but I'm making a record to say that if pi is not what it's meant to be, I believe because that pi, pi, is based on the true value of the golden ratio. So the true value of pi is actually 3.144, which means Euler's amazing equation is actually in slight error in the third decimal point. So as we correct and modify these disharmonic values from history, I believe we're going to be entering into a, a highly advanced civilization where when pi is corrected and we understand the true value of Euler's identity and the equations are corrected, these are correctional codes, then I believe we can travel through wormholes and reach another higher level of existence but only if we are connected to mother earth so because the value for e is connected to nature and to rhythms and cycles so last thing i just wanted um when i teach these codes a lot of people ask me well what's the practical use of it how can i really understand what e is about how can i use it in my daily life so i just wanted to conclude with this final thing on compound interest so let's just say we have 
a one dollar in our bank account. The punchline is we're going to get to the exact value of two point seven one eight two eight cents. So how how can we grow the one dollar exactly to become e? That e is about growth. Okay. So you have one you have one dollar in your bank account. But what if we can, and if you calculated the interest once at the end of the year, if you've got a hundred percent interest on one dollar, you add another dollar to the one you get two dollars, right? But what if we calculated the interest? This is called compound. If if the interest was done twice a year, we have to multiply one point five. We square it, and we get, and we end up with two dollars and twenty five cents. So we're getting close to two point seven. If we compounded quarterly, that means you're getting interest three times, four times a year. A quarter is 0.25. So you say 1.25 to the fourth power, and that gives you $2.44. And, and then we could do it, if we did interest every month, you can see that the formula, you put 1 12th there. We add 1 plus 1 12th square it. Or actually, that should be to the 12th power there. You get 2.6 cents. We're getting close. We could do it um, at intervals for every day of the... We could do it for every week. So if you put the fraction 1 on 52 to the 52 power, you get 2.69. We could do it for daily interest, which is where N is 365. So where you've got 1 on 12th, you put 1 on 365 to the 365th power. And see how we got 2.7? So the limit as n grows is a large number that came to be known as e. With continuous compound and the account value will reach 2.71828. So I think that's quite amazing that this is a real life example. We started off with a dollar. We studied compound interest at school. We didn't really understand the value of why we use e. But it turned out that that one dollar will become 2.718 cents if we did continuous daily hourly interest. So this is the way nature works. So I just wanted to conclude that it's our duty to study patterns and our duty to share this with the younger generation so that they can get excited by seeing pattern recognition and how that, and when they run with this sacred geometry and um, speed maths, they can take this knowledge into the next level where we're using it for better technological advancements. Because at the moment we're in a world where things like Wi-Fi are, are disharmonic, they're out of frequency, and it's, it's causing ill health to the population because we're talking about population growth. So we want to correct this um, ancient mathematical wisdom and bring it into the light where children love mathematics, where they see a passion for the cycles and rhythms of mathematical codes. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. I'll just, just go back to the first page just to conclude that um, I'm, I'm really calling for a computer school mathematician to plug this formula for N, where N is some big number like 10,000 or even 1 million, and just check to see that we get 2.71828459045, etc. So um, there's more to come, so stay tuned and share this around. I'm James, see you.